this is Terry Beatley, your host of What If We've Been Wrong? I'm shining light into some dark places so that beauty, goodness, and truth defeat the schemes of the enemy. It's true, people are perishing for lack of knowledge, and we're instructed to have nothing to do with the evil deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. That's what I do on What If We've Been Wrong? Rethink, explore, and uncover some hidden truths so that more people can experience an abundant life and the joy of being set free from the shackles that hold us in prison. Welcome to What If We've Been Wrong? What we call good, evil, and evil good. What's right is wrong, and wrong is right, and what's up is down, and down is up. And my guest today is Mallory Millett, and Mallory knows quite a bit about good versus evil, because as it turns out, Mallory's sister helped unleash the Marxist radical feminist sexual revolution onto the United States of America, which was just seeped in Marxism and communism, and we're still suffering so many of the consequences of that. And uh, Mallory, welcome onto the show today. So glad you're here with me. Thank you, Terry. I'm so happy to be with you. Well, well, Mallory, we have a lot to talk about. We just made a list, and on top of that list is all these uh, Hondurans. What is it? Four thousand of them trampling, you know, north from Honduras, um, assuming that they can just pour over our border as if they have a right uh, to come into the United States illegally and demand services, demand welfare, demand schooling, demand all those different things. Mallory, what say you on this topic? Well, concerning those demands, I I get such a kick out of this uh, insanity because uh, we have our own <clears throat> excuse me, our own social services uh, departments here in America that we have saved for and contributed to in order to help the less fortunate in our own country, our less fortunate citizens. And these people pour across the borders, and then they get priority over our citizens That's right. for our social services. It's it's absolutely shocking. I mean, people say, "Well, have you no compassion? You should have charity toward these people." And I'm I always try to remind people that charity begins at home. You do not feed your own, the you do not feed the neighbor's children before you feed your own children. Exactly. You, you're not really allowed to do charity outside of your home until you've taken care of your own. Uh, responsibilities with your own loved ones. Illegals that come over, we know that they're hurting the legal immigrants who are here now because they're stealing the jobs, they're taking the jobs, it drives the wages down, you know, because if the illegal guy's standing out the corner and he's willing to work for a dollar an hour, who in the world is going to pay, you know, ten dollars an hour for the legal immigrant when they can go pick up a bunch of dollar an hour employees? And people are not connecting the fact that we used to have the greatest health system in the world and the greatest educational system in the world. I remember when I went to live in the Philippines, I was so proud of America because we had a tiny illegitimacy rate, I think it was 5%, and we had a 95% literacy rate. And and compared with the Philippines, it was just the reverse. And uh, now these people coming across our borders by the million since Teddy Kennedy uh, meddled in our in our uh, immigration uh, laws, and they have broken our hospital system, they've broken our medical system, and they're breaking our social uh, services, and they're also breaking the schools. Our schools are overrun with these people, our hospitals are overrun with them, and the American citizens who deserve these services are being uh, overlooked and, and, and overridden, really. Right. And it was explained to me recently how, you know, when the illegals come over and then they get involved with the gangs or they're already involved with gangs when they when they come over the border and when they find out that, you know, some of the whatever the young teenagers are come from illegal families, they hold those kids hostage, Mallory. Uh, in terms of yeah. like sex slavery, that they will threaten to kill or to expose, you know, the illegal parents if the girl doesn't participate with the gang and their whole thing about, you know, <laughs> it's it's very implosive and it's hurting. It's hurt, but you know what? I think more and more people and the inner city people are catching on to this. I, I mean, c- compassion. I think so too. I mean, do you think so? 
I think so. I think people are starting to really wake up. Uh, there are neighborhoods, uh, Trump talks about the fact that he grew up on Long Island, and there are all sorts of neighborhoods there that have been just destroyed by the MS-13 people, and they're in terror. And now that he's busting these MS-13 gangs, people are being liberated. He said it's like the liberation of France in World War II and stuff. I mean, wow. they're getting them out of the neighborhoods, and the people are celebrating as if it's the end of World War II or something. Mm. It's just this can't be going on in our beautiful United States of America. And why do you think it's going on? Because you have a lot of years to reflect on. You, you understand the dynamics of power and politics. What's at the root of it, Mallory? But, you know, you know, Terry, these people really aren't Democrats anymore. They're calling themselves Democrats, and many of them think that if they're with the Democrat Party, it's the same as when they voted for FDR, when, the, when they voted for JFK. But this is a whole different Democrat Party. It's been completely strong-armed and taken over by the socialists. And this flirtation with socialism that's going on in America is just a disgrace. People think, you know, the youngsters don't understand because, you see, you know this, Terry, they're not teaching history in the schools anymore. Right. So these kids are getting, they're getting besotted with socialism. They have this big flirtation with it. And they think it sounds terrific because it's got the word social in it. They think it's very nice because it has social in it. But they don't understand that it's this... Karl Marx called socialism the thin end of the wedge of communism. He said, you know, that's how we get in the door. And then once they're socialists, they're communists within right. moments. Mm -hmm. It takes no time at all to make them communists. And that's how the, 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 peace, the political correctness and the identity politics, where you're only described as a black person, a white person, a gay person, a woman, you know, you're not just an individual, sovereign individual in the United States of America with your sovereign identity in a sovereign nation like America. They're trying to whittle away at the sovereignness of the individual and the sovereignness of our country. And, I mean, when you see people like Antifa, who say that they're anti-fascist, this is the consequence of not studying history because those of us who really were taught history know the the emblems of fascism and that is the 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 masked faces the black attire they're they're running around in crowds with tire irons and bicycle locks in bags that they're swinging at people and they're calling themselves anti-fascist they are fascists they are the exact facsimile of the brown shirts in Hitler's Germany and the black shirts in Mussolini's Italy. And if our kids had studied uh, history, they would recognize fascists the minute they see this Antifa on the streets. But since the commies have taken away history from all of our schools and our textbooks, they're, they're roped into this idea that socialism is a very nice thing that takes care of people and, you know, right. but... People have to be aware of these word games. Whatever the left is calling you, it's really what they're doing. It's a trick they play. I was going to say, my father always said, whatever, you know, the, whatever the um, you know progressive left declares, you always know what the truth is because it's the opposite of what they're saying, <laughs> and it's so true. God rest my my father's soul. <laughs> Uh, he, he was absolutely <laughs> well, you know, right. There's a, right. Well, this this reminds me of um, of you know Bella Dodd was a very well known communist in 1944, and she talks about uh, a national communist convention at Madison Square Garden in 1944. Terry, mm -hmm. and this is a quote from her. She said, "I attended a private dinner where Alexander Trachtenberg, a known socialist, got up and said, quote, when we get ready to take the U.S." The United States, we will not take it under the label of communism or socialism. These labels are unpleasant to the American people. We will take the United States under labels we have made lovable. We'll take it under, liberation, under, we'll take it under liberalism, under progressivism, under democracy. But take it, we will. Mm. Now that's a statement from a communist in 1944, and look at what has gone on in the 80 years since then. Right, right. It's just uncanny how successful these people are 
are getting and we must stop them. Well, you know, and you think about what, you know, the public school system, what they've taught our young people to think that the free market enterprise system, that the whole thing is rigged and that you have to be, um, you know, one of the lucky ones to actually, you know, uh, make money in it. And, um, and to me, they've just, they've dumbed everything down. They've twisted the truth. And I think one of the best things that um, parents can do for their children is encourage them to start their own business. Let them experience what yeah. it's like. And I'm, I'm watching both of my children now who are in their early 20s. They both have small businesses and they're learning what does it mean to be creative, to come up with a business plan, to come up with an idea that you want to try to execute to make money. You know, and you're doing something that you're passionate about or you feel like you know, you're, you're meeting a need. And, um, and right now they're both being successful at it. And I, it, it's, that's one of the best things I think we can do to encourage. It's kind of like going back to the old lemonade stand. Let those kids have the lemonade stand. Right. Let them taste capitalism. Yeah, they're even trying to suppress the lemonade stands, oppressing these little eight-year-olds with their little lemonade stands. I mean, these people are so virulent. And when they claim that it's luck and it's all rigged, then explain Oprah Winfrey to us. Explain Kanye West to us. Exactly. These are people, Oprah Winfrey didn't even grow up with indoor plumbing. Mm -hmm. She was so poverty-ridden, poverty-stricken. And look at what's happened to Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. I mean, look what's happened to so many, many, many people. People can start from nothing in America and end up with everything. Exactly. And it's only by hard work and determination that that uh, you can do this. And it, it creates character. It makes our country so strong. We want to be a strong country of 320 million strong sovereign individuals who ruin their who rule rule their own lives and and that way we can be a truly sovereign nation exactly if every individual is sovereign then we're really strong mm -hmm. so we have to really fight for that when you go into the voting booth everybody who's listening you are not voting for franklin delano roosevelt you are not voting for john fitzgerald kennedy these people are long gone and their politics is long gone. We've been taken over by foreign agents, foreign groups from both Moscow and Beijing, from China and Russia. They've infiltrated our media. They've infiltrated our colleges and universities. And they pretty much own those two huge aspects of America. And we have to work so hard to get our media back and to get our universities back so that That's our right. kids are being particularly taught history and civics. And, but That's it is so encouraging, important. though, like, you know, when you see, um, uh, oh, what's his name? Kirk with uh, Turning Point USA and Candace Owens. Charlie and, Kirk. Charlie Kirk, yeah. yeah. Like, I would love to interview him. You know, and they're going out to college campuses and, and look at the following that they have. Look at the influence that these young people have going right in, right among their peers. And they're educating. They're teaching yeah. them what is socialism, what's Marxism, you know, what are the lies behind, quote, yeah. progressivism. And people are walking away. And so that's one of the things we want to do today is encourage people that that voting booth is a private, it's a private you know, yeah. uh, room. It's a private space. And, and you do not have to vote for the Democrat Party. You do not. I mean, <laughs> we encourage people to vote. But don't vote Democrat. <laughs> You're all alone in that little voting booth. That's right. You can vote for whomever you wish. Nobody sees. It's the, one of the most important things we have in America is the secret ballot. Because in third world countries, they don't have things like that. You know, everybody knows whom you're voting for, and they can p punish you and burn your house down and do all these terrible things. But in America, the ballot is secret. So all of you, I would encourage anybody out there who's involved with a lot of left-wing people, a lot of liberals. I mean, I've been an actress, and so I was surrounded by liberals. And, you know, you don't have to tell them your thoughts about all of this. You don't have to, you, you don't owe it to anyone to tell them uh, what you're doing or how you feel about all of this. If you feel it's dangerous to your safety or your reputation, but you are free to totally walk away from them and their bogus ideas, and you can walk right into that voting booth and you can vote Republican all the way down the line and secure Trump's 
uh, victories and secure the victories of the conservative parties where we're able to rebuild America. It would be so wonderful to be able to rebuild America back to what it, it once was because I'm old enough to remember how America used to be and it was terrific. The only thing we needed to, to cure or to fix was racism and we spent the 50s and 60s and 70s working very hard on that and I think America is very much post-racial now. I don't think anybody's really that interested in what color you are. The only people who are are the Democrats who want to keep pretending that they're pro-black when there's no such thing as a pro-black progressive because they have run all of our cities, Terry, for the last 80 years. They've run Detroit, Chicago, Baltimore, uh, St. Louis, uh, New York, Los Angeles. I mean, you look at these cities, they are just wrecks. They are ruinations of great cities. San Francisco, look at San Francisco. The liberals have destroyed all of these great cities. Now, you never find a Republican-run city that's in this state. Any state that's Republican-run or any city that's Republican-run at this point in history is usually, look at Texas, it's in great shape. Mm -hmm. Um, You just have to know this, everybody. Please, please cut off from this past where you're against you know, the Republicans, and you think that we're fascists and we're Nazis and we're white supremacists and all this stuff. Ann Coulter's just been called a Nazi and a white supremacist. Nothing could be further from the truth. (laughs) She is so, I've been out with Ann and black people who are friends of hers. We all party together. There's no racism, not a racist drop in this woman's blood. Well, I think the important Um, thing to recognize, well, they do try to get away with it because of divide and conquering the more they can divide up our nation in different um, yeah. subsectors and this is all part of the you know postmodernism and uh, but it's you know at the end of the day divide conquer use lies use misinformation yes. and then I mean they have control of all the major entities the communists have control of all the you know they got control of the education system they got control of the the media uh, entertainment, all these different sectors, mm. and uh, but I, I think a bright day is coming. Look, we're going to be right back. Uh, Mallory, Mallory's going to be staying with us, and we're going to be um, taking a peek at some very interesting history about radical feminism and the impact that it's had on us right now today. Because in light of the Kavanaugh hearings, Mallory has a thing or two to talk about. All right, we'll be right back. The Out Loud Perspective awaits you in life, love, politics, a healthy lifestyle, your faith, personal development, and living an out loud life on AmericaOutloud.com. Blitz your news and entertainment network where you can listen 24-7 on our free apps on both Android and Apple. Welcome to the new era in communications, America Out Loud Talk Radio. Mallory, you spent a fair number of years in Hollywood as well as in the in uh, the New York um, theater markets, and you have lots of experience. I mean, you were surrounded by a lot of people who might have called themselves uh, progressives or liberals or Democrats. Uh, My question to you is: Did they know that they were falling for the lies of? The, of Marxism, I mean, did you did you ever meet anybody who was actually acutely aware that, yeah, they they follow Marx, they follow the the worldview of Karl Marx, or were they actually were more people more ignorant of communism or Marxism, and they were just sort of rolling with the punches? What say you? Well, on they this? really run the gamut, Terry. Okay. Yeah, they run the gamut, Terry. They really run the gamut. Um, Some of them are out-and-out, full-fledged Marxists who are committed to the great Marxist revolution. And then they dwindle all the way down to the most ignorant people who are just tagging along with these Marxists and repeating everything they're saying, not knowing that what they're saying or doing is Marxism, because they're so ignorant of the entire history. You know, what kills me is that we, we conservatives even love to walk around saying that Ronald Reagan won the Cold War without firing a shot. But Ronald Reagan did not win the Cold War. 
We lost the Cold War. When you can take a, a, a step back and look at the fact that all of our colleges and universities have been completely taken over by Marxists, Thank you. and all of our yep. media yep. has been completely t taken over by Marxists, then you, they, they, really, they really won us. They really are exactly. here. They're like, they're like you know, termites in the woodwork, and they are eating away and chewing away at the very foundations of everything that we believe in. Now, when I spend all this time in the New York theater and in Hollywood in films and television, I can't tell you what I had to go through. I mean, first of all, it's simply assumed that you're a big leftist. It's just assumed. They mm -hmm. all are, and they sit amongst themselves and agree to all these things, and uh, they all, as a group, hate Donald Trump. They hate everything that we on the conservative side do, and they're, they're trying to pawn themselves off as uh, loyal Americans, and they're really not. I mean, imagine people who don't want any borders. Why would you have no borders? That exactly. would be preposterous. Mm -hmm. uh, so the thing is, and also this Me Too movement, I really have to laugh because, first of all, one of the things that, that my sister and her cohorts, when they started the women's movement, the militant movement in America in 1970, um, they were pushing promiscuity, homosexuality, uh, 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 abortion. Uh, they, they were pushing all of these things. They were encouraging the young women to be promiscuous. My sister taught women's studies classes in all the colleges and universities, and two of their tenets were be a slut and be proud of it. Be a slut and be proud of it. Right. That's insane. Right. And, 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 and be an outlaw. Be a damned outlaw. That's what they, and you look at Lois Lerner and Loretta Lynch and Hillary Clinton and, and uh, uh, Sally Yates and all of these women, they are outlaws. They will refuse to, uh, uh, to uh, 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 cooperate with the law. They refuse. They are absolutely holding up a, a, a banner for being an outlaw, and they think this is really, really hip. This is really with it. This is great. Well, when I you see too, what they did during this confirmation. Well, I, I think, too, they use, well, they use their feminism as a weapon. They use the the fact that they're a female yes. as a weapon, you know, because it because it can, uh, you know, because anytime men, you know, men on the other side are going to criticize them, th then they'll turn it right around as if, oh, well, they're only being criticized because they're a woman. So it's so it's I mean, it really is wicked. It's evil, you know, the root of what your well, sister did. Well, I got a question going back, to, you know, regarding your sister Kate Millett. Where did she learn? to be a Marxist because in your family growing up you all did you you were your family was not a communist family right no well they were all Democrats and my my maternal grandfather my mother's father founded the Democrat Farmer Labor Party in Minnesota. He was the founder of the DFL in Minnesota, mm -hmm. my own grandfather. So these people were st stolid uh, people for FDR. They were a thousand percent behind FDR. The day he died, you'd have thought that our own father had died, the wailing and the weeping in all the households of my family. And, and the, th the thing is that, you know, when, when, you, when you go around and you convince all the young women in all of the universities through the women's studies classes to be promiscuous, to ex encourage young women to be promiscuous, you cause a multitude, a myriad amount of ills. You know, you have girls getting pregnant out of wedlock. You get people who are really, really uh, schooled in uh, uh, birth control and abortion. They're having abortions at 15, 16, 17, multiple abortions. When you encourage promiscuity among young women and then for instance Terry when I was in Hollywood and in New York I can't tell you how many producers offices I had to run out of screaming no 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 I'm not that girl I'm not that girl please well, I'm literally not how many what would you say what, is it more uh, than five? Oh no I would say most most of the producers in, most in of the my producers 20, assumed 20, okay uh, of, of of films and of theater, 
uh, not so much in theater now anymore because the homosexuals have completely taken over Broadway. So they're not preying on the young women there as much as they're preying on the young men. Yeah. But in Hollywood, it, it was just perfectly awful. I had to get up and run out of a lot of producers' offices. And by the way, I, Roman Polanski tried to rape me. So I know for certain that that man is a rapist because he... Mm -hmm actually tried to rape me and I had to run for my life. I can't tell you the struggle I went through to get away from him and to run down a hallway and get to an elevator and get in that elevator before he caught me. I was terrified of him. And what year was so, that? So I mean this Mallory? is everywhere. What what year uh, was that? That was nineteen that was nineteen seventy. Uh his wife had been murdered by the Charles Manson gang in in August of nineteen sixty nine. Mm -hmm. And in February of nineteen seventy he was trying to rape me. Six months after his wife was murdered, he was trying to rape me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, th th these people have no compunctions about these things. And if you don't go along with this, then you're just a, an idiot. You're somebody who just doesn't know what's good for you, you know? What, what do you think of it now that the women are, you know, coming out and they're sharing their stories and all that? What do you think of it? Well, well, I was just going to get go on to that because it's so hilarious to me. I mean, I find this beyond humorous because for most of the last few years of my life, I've been saying to people, look, if you want to be on the silver screen, you have to trade sexual favors for work. You absolutely have to. If you will not do that, you will not get up on the screen. I know that because I've made my journey through all these offices, and I've seen how they react when you will not cooperate with this promiscuity. So I find it hilarious that these girls, who have all taken part in it willingly, they will say to you, well, I had to do it because I had to get the part. Right. Well, you had? You had to give oral sex to some strange man? You don't ever have to do that, young women. Please believe me, you never, ever have to do that. And, of course, you won't get on the silver screen, but you can have a nice life without trading sexual favors. Uh, uh, I am I'm just find it appalling that these girls were doing that very willingly with Harvey Weinstein, and please, they're using him as a scapegoat. Every one of these men does this. Right. And when Ronan Farrow... Was, was shopping that article around. He was sh shopping that article around for six months, and nobody would publish it, the one about Harvey Weinstein. Mm -hmm. Nobody would publish that article. And then, so during those six months, all these girls like Rose McGowan and this one and that one, they all heard about it. They heard that this thing was going to blow sky high. So they got out there to preempt and so then they started pointing fingers and saying, he raped me, he forced me, he forced me. No, no, no. They're just saving their own little rear ends. That's what they're doing. They're just getting out there in front of it and blaming Harvey for something that they cooperated in. Because I just happen to know that, you know, these guys don't really force this on you particularly. There are too many promiscuous girls out there that they can get it from any day of the week, you know? So, uh, well, I saw one interview. You know, I, don't, I don't know what, who the young actress was. I don't know who she was. I wish I did know. But she was sitting there with Harvey Weinstein, and, and she's dressed provocatively. She talks provocatively. She, <laughs> her body language is provocative. And then she was on <laughs> some talk show talking about just how difficult it was with Harvey Weinstein, and and this was all caught on camera. It was her camera, and I. But no, I, I'll be. This is my take on it. I think some of these women, Mallory, were never ever taught right from wrong. I literally think Mallory, they don't even know what they're doing. The young women. Now you may argue yeah. with me on that. But I literally think, I no, mean, I any won't. woman who would dress that way, sit beside Harvey Weinstein, sort of cuddle up to his, to his jokes and his suggestions, I mean, it's kind of like going all the way, but, and then claim yeah. her innocence and her naivete and how she was so taken advantage of, that's bull crap. It really is. Well, you know, Terry... The, the big problem is that they have spread this monstrous lie that is so obviously baloney 
It's just raw, 1,000% baloney, that men and women are exactly the same. Men and women are not exactly the same. We're the male and female sex, uh, uh, units of the human race. And the male is very different from the female. And there's this vicious thing that these women do now that think that they're liberated. And they walk around half naked yep. without understanding that male nature, the nature of the male, is to be stimulated visually. The minute they see something that's female and very sexual, there, certain things start to operate in them. There are motors that turn on, you know, that, that they have to learn to corral and to rule over. If they want to be good men, they have to learn how to do that. But to be a half-naked woman sitting around going, want it, want it, you can't have it. Exactly. Want it, you can't have it. Right. That, that is vicious and it's so cruel not understanding the nature of men and how stimulated they get and how excited it, it makes them to see women like this. Women need to be modest and ladylike and to be encouraging the best things in young men. Exactly. They need to be encouraging purity in young men. They don't need to be testing. You know, they're walking around stark naked in front of this guy, and then, and then if he gets overwhelmed with that, then it's his fault. You have a, a need to have a sense of responsibility for the fact that you are carrying around these precious organs of procreation and this precious female body that does have a very exciting quality to it. You know, we are not the same. Men are very different from us, and we need to have sympathy for them. We need to pity them. We need to love them. We need, we need to have empathy for them. And, and take care of their weaknesses, not, not try to provoke their weaknesses. Why would you do that to someone you care about? Yeah, you know, that it, is so it, well it's said. Just that is so well said, and I can tell it's coming right from the heart. You know, because it's, it's, the, it's the life you've led, you know, and, and, yeah. and you've yeah. seen America grind down. You know, because America has ground right. down, and and I and I, and because of what your sister did to our country and and people like her, you know, they're radical Marxists, yeah. you know, and they set out to destroy American culture, and they did a darn good job doing it. Um, in, in the midst of this, you know, they've ground down women, and women, ha we, you know, women in general have failed to recognize that the power that they actually have and it's not power yes. in that they're they're misusing their power I mean to put on you know just yes. like you said to dress you know like a you know LA prostitute and uh, to, to, yes. uh, to and then and then to expect men not to react to that it's just it doesn't add up yes but, to think but, they're not going to be stimulated by it. I mean, they're built to be stimulated that way. But, you know, well, it, but it's just, the uh, dilemma, though, Mallory, is that we now have multiple generations. You know, we have daughters who have literally been taught by mothers to do that because the mothers never knew. So it's kind of like, wow. No. It's, 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 you know, so how do you, how, how do you reclaim culture in that way? I mean, you're out there right now in the well, you know, Hollywood area. Um, sometimes you're up in New York. I mean, you look at the mass of people. Where do you start? Where do you start? Well, the thing is, the thing is that these people really, truly, they have avowed to, they have stated that they have a mission to destroy men. To destroy men? Our men? Our beautiful, blessed, sacred men. I love men, Terry. I think the world of men. Men are something, you know, this is something I love to bring up with people because they talk about empowering women, empowering women. Let me ta tell you about female power. When you look at the Garden of Eden and you look at the story where God made Adam and he told him not to eat the fruit of the tree, and Adam knew this was God. He knew that he would be doomed if he disobeyed God. He absolutely knew that. But Eve comes along, and she tells him, oh, no, eat the fruit. And what does he do? He chooses Eve over God. This is the power that the female has in this world, and that a man will defy even God just to make his woman happy. Men will do anything to make women happy. To make a woman smile, they will give 
anything, they will do anything. Just think of the fact that they gird themselves up with, with weapons of, of, of uh, war, and they will go out and throw themselves into the middle of a bloody melee in order to save their wives and children, in order to keep their families safe. Men are so brave and so strong and so... Uh, they, they love women so much. Women just do not get this, that they, in the very beginning, they had all the power in the world, much more power than the man. And even, as a matter of fact, forgive me for this, but God, men will forsake God for a woman. And this is, this is something that women ha- should have a, carry a great sense of responsibility for. You are very responsible for how you stimulate your man, for how you, you, you encourage him, for the ways in which you, you, uh, um, um, you know, try to bring him out and get him to do what's right. You know, that's a woman's job, is to nurture a man, to take care of him, to keep him alive, to keep him healthy, uh, to keep him uh, caring strongly for the family. And, and I, I am all for the division of labor. I love it that men go out and run the world, and women need to stay and run society. Woo! Since women stopped running society, <laughs> society has crumbled. That is so true. That's I'm the laughing. power women have. I'm laughing only because I can hear the backlash coming. How dare that Mallory Millett <laughs> suggest that women need to stay home? Let me tell you something, women of America. Yeah. I had that career in a man's world in investment banking for, I don't know, 15, 15, 16 years. And it was great and, you know, it broke the glass ceilings and things like that. But there was no greater, there was no better feeling than to wake up that first Monday morning where I was no longer having to punch some corporate clock. And and I was then yeah. a stay-at-home mother and a wife, and then mm. that's when my mm. life adventure actually began. All right, we will be right back with Mallory, and we're going to be digging deeper again into radical feminism and building up our men, and we've got these upcoming elections, so hold tight. Don't go anywhere. Think back to the last time you felt healthy and energized. The best times of our lives occur when we're at the peak of our health. Sleeping better, full of energy and focus. We know that fades with age, and you might be feeling the effects of aging as low energy and poor sleep. But it doesn't have to be that way. There haven't been any nutrition systems designed to rejuvenate our bodies as we get older until now. Healthy Cell Pro is the only multi-nutrient system that impacts the building block of your body, the cell. Created by anti-aging expert and Nobel Prize nominee, Dr. Vincent Giampapa. Award-winning Healthy Cell Pro cuts through the complexity of nutrition supplements by simply giving you the purest ingredients, filling dietary gaps to nourish your cells and enhance your quality of life for optimal performance. Visit HealthyCell.com and use code OUTLOUD for an exclusive discount or call 844-869-9958. All right, we're back with Mallory Millett, and we're going to pivot, and we're going to talk about the beauty of homemaking. Oh my gosh, it might sound like such an archaic thing in this radical feminist world, but guess what? We're discovering more and more women are rediscovering the beauty of home. And and you said uh, that you've got a friend named Carrie Gress, and she recently wrote an article. Tell us about this article, Mallory. Carrie just wrote, she's just a beatific writer. I'm telling you, this woman is such an exquisite writer. And she just wrote an article called Home. And it's about what it means to be a woman who makes a home. And this is the the seat of civilization. It's the core of civilization, is a beautiful, civilized, loving, comforting, nurturing home for all of the children and the husband to come home to at the end of the day. And everything is there, this beautiful nest that this woman has put her whole heart and soul into. The women are capable of such beauty and so they have such talents in terms of making a, a, a safe resting place for people. And this is what people are missing. When you go out in the world right now, it looks to me as if everybody picked their clothes up off the floor that morning. <laughs> I, I've never seen anything like the way people look out in the streets in America nowadays. Mm-hmm. It is truly revolting. There is no 
don't care for your personal appearance. There's no, it doesn't even look like there's any cleanliness. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at oceans of 65 year old men walking around with backward baseball caps and Mickey Mouse t-shirts on. This is not the, the level of dignity a man needs to carry out into the world. You know, this is just silliness. Now, everybody is keeping this prolonged adolescence that goes on forever and ever. The women all look like teenagers when they're 60, and the men look like goofy 10-year-olds. And th- there's just no, there's no sensibility going on anymore. And I believe that, you know, I just saw the statistic now where 40% of the babies born in America are not born into a marriage Forty percent. If you think that this is a decent thing to do to a living human being who's probably going to be alive for a hundred years now, at this point, the way medicine is going, so this person's going to be a hundred years on this planet, and you haven't provided them with the basic foundation of a father and a mother who are married to each other. That is the very least a person could expect when they come into this world Absolutely. is a solid foundation of a home with a very active mother who is helping run society. When the women ran society, we had a beautiful society. What, well, I was just going to well, say, talk because, to us about what did it look like? Now, I'm, I'm talking, to, let's go back to the what, oh, what, what can you reflect on, the 1950s? I would say if you look at 1955, okay. 1956. And you just look at the way that life was going at that point, where people they lived in a home. There was a father and a mother married who had children, and the house was very, very clean, very well equipped. The mother made breakfast in the morning. The mother and the mothers all got together in the neighborhood. They would have coffee clatches, and you know, since it was a Judeo-Christian culture, they ran their homes according to the Ten Commandments. You run your home with the Ten Commandments as your foundation. And then the children are learning that at the ages of two and three and four, right at their mother's knee, a mother who is executing these commandments. She is making sure that the children are following these Ten Commandments. Well, then the kids go out into the world, and they bring that with them. And when they grow up, they bring it into the offices and the factories and the conference rooms and the, and the, everywhere that they go to either live or work, the schools that they're in, and they bring the Ten Commandments with them. And as long as we've got a society where people are mindful of the Ten Commandments, things hum along beautifully. The women would have their coffee clutches at 10 or 11 in the morning in the neighborhood, and they'd all be talking about how the kids were behaving, and one mother would say, oh my God, your son keeps coming over to our house and behaving badly. And, and the other mother will say, well, I'll take care of that. Don't you worry about that. And <laughs> They would all agree with each other about what the rules were. And if some neighbor chastised your child, you backed them up. Nowadays, if you chastise your child's, uh, your neighbor's child, they'll go, don't you dare talk to my child that way. I mean, it's all of this enmity and this, this it's not the neighborhood taking care of itself, you know. Uh, when women ran society, we had a beautiful society, and we've got to have women running society. Now that they took off with briefcases and decided they could all be lawyers, as if we need all these lawyers, for God's sake, we, they're, they're all turning into lawyers and all these other different things. Society has completely fallen apart, Terry. Mm-hmm. And again, we have a, you know, we have a horrible... Important mess of a society. Well, I think it's important because you know, I never want to be the, the woman out there saying, oh, well, you know, you know, girls graduate from high school and not get an education. I, for me, I'm not saying don't pursue a career or whatever, but I think it's putting things in the proper perspective. And I mean, because for yep. me, I bought those lies for so long. So the idea that I married my high school sweetheart, but I postponed motherhood until 32 and 35 years old, that was only mm. because of the lies that I had bought. If I, if I could do it all over again, good Lord, we would have had kids much earlier on. And we would have had many more children, not just, you know, stop it too. And right. so this is what I'm saying. It's like, do I regret having a career? No. Would I have done things differently? Absolutely. Because the, I, I had prioritized uh, incorrectly. I bought the lies that your sister taught. You know, little did I know. And that's the other thing, too, is it's very insidious. A lot of these, you know, the lies um, that, and, you know, I'm 
you know, I graduated college back in 1986 it was and so so your sister's deeds had been around for what 25 years or so and oh or yeah years. it was it bled through everything you you were taught yeah yeah but but that, that what well, that's a great way of describing it because that that's before the women's studies I don't I don't recall the schools I was at had women's studies programs but they did have a big push for like national organization of women on the college campuses and of course I've mm. shared this on on air before you know my father said don't you dare join that organization because he was well read in communism and he he knew it for what it was it was a communist organization Organization. So, um, so anyway, and any young listeners and young, you know, m men listeners, you know, I just think it's important that when they're young is is get the priorities right. You know, d don't hock yourself up in yeah. debt. And you know, anyway, I'm I'm backing up what you're saying, Mallory, but just letting people know that we're we're not saying, d well, at least for me, I'm not saying don't get that college education. Don't don't be career minded, but just don't get swallowed up in it, thinking that that's the most important thing. And before you know it, you blink, and your twenties are over. They're done. You're now in your thirties. Well, let, let let me be the bad guy here and sure. say, do not send your daughters and sons to college anymore. Mm -hmm. Do not send them to college. Do deep research. If you want to send them to college. Send them to Hillsdale or Thomas Aquinas College. There are some very great colleges out there, but there are only about 10 of them or something. But don't send them to any of these other schools. You will lose your child. By, by, by Thanksgiving or Christmas of their freshman year, they're starting to look at you with total contempt. You are the enemy. They do nothing but teach these kids to hate their parents, to hate everything their parents ever stood for, to hate religion, to hate God, to hate the family, to hate babies. Oh, babies are the enemy of the human race. Babies are the worst thing that can happen to a person. Hate men. Hate the, These are hate groups, Terry. These groups are serious hate groups. Hate America. Hate Donald Trump. Hate anybody who's really trying to help you or do, do good. Right. I mean, I really encourage people now. I've been doing it for 20 years, standing up in meetings and conventions and saying, stop sending your children to college. You don't understand. You spend your whole life earning enough money to send them to college, and you send them to college, and then you lose them. And they turn into these strange characters who have none of your values anymore and look at you with absolute contempt. Mm -hmm. and, and, and treat their parents horribly. You're an ignorant fool because you're not. And, and this business about, oh, communism, there's nothing wrong with communism. It's just about the community. That's simply not true. Right. These are very evil people who are trying to take over your lives for their purposes. Right. Communism has been proven over and over and over again to be a complete flop. And, and yet people still use it to try to get power over you. That's right. And and remember earlier we were talking about Bella Dodd who ended up working for the Communist Party USA, you know, reporting to somebody over in Russia. You know, Bella Dodd, after she finally figured this out that communism is a dead end road and all they do is they right. use people, you know, the people in power in communism just use people like her to advance their right. agenda. She ended up um, right. confessing all this to uh, uh, Fulton Sheen, Bishop Fulton Sheen, a Catholic priest yes. up, in, up in New York. She admitted, she admitted what she had done, which was to place one thousand, help place 1,100 communist Catholic seminarians in Catholic seminaries in the United States. And yes. that was to implode the Catholic Church from the inside yes. out. And then, it, but, but yeah. it was 1952 that she admitted all this. So, um, look at Notre Dame. Notre Dame was a great Catholic college. It is now not even close to Catholic. Right. It's not even close to it. In fact, they're almost anti-Catholic. Notre Dame has turned into the exact opposite of what it was founded to be. And that's all through Trachtenberg and, and of course, the Saul Alinsky. I tell everybody, I, I'm saying these words to you, Saul Alinsky and Cloward and Piven. Saul Alinsky, 
Cloward and Piven. Look them up, everybody. Study Alinsky. Study Cloward and Piven. And then you will recognize the activities going on in America right now, that these are those philosophies being acted out all over the country right now. If we can understand Alinskyism and Cloward and Pivism, then we're, we're home free. Mm-hmm. If we can get this spread around the country of how dangerous these philosophies are and how they're designed to destroy you, not to nurture you, or to, to support you as a citizen of this country. Well, and the, the communists, they look at the family unit, a married mother and father with children, with such gross yeah. disdain. And so that's one of their number one goals is to destroy the family unit. And look what's happened. Absolutely. Look what's happened, America. They want to just, really, they want to destroy the family. Now, why would you, to want to destroy the family? That is to destroy love. I mean, it's just, it's so appalling. I can't get over how people fall for this. Well, just breaks my heart, Terry. <laughs> but when more and more people like you come out <laughs> and they share their experiences, uh-huh. uh, I think it's important because we can at least put um, we can put um, flesh, I guess you'd say, uh, experience, enlightenment on at least these ideas. Now, right then, another idea came to me would be um, people to watch the movie called A Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. <gasps> you know, it's on right now. Clo- Oh, they're, they're showing it on EW. They're showing it on EWTN constantly again right now. So everybody, go watch Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. It will blow your mind. Mm-hmm. And uh, and this is all about the the you know the the communist invasion, if you will, inside the Catholic Church. Um, now, now I'm I'm Catholic. Mallory's Catholic, and we're just stating real history. We know it's happened. It's all you know. It's all verified. And, uh, but, but they knew they couldn't attack the church from the outside, so they had to get into the inside. And so that's a really good movie, uh, packed full of information. It's about an hour and a half long. Another one is called Agenda, Grinding America Down. There's Agenda 1 and there's Agenda 2. Uh, but I think the subtitle mm. is uh, uh, grind, yeah, Agenda... Agenda, Grinding America Down. And, and again, that's giving all a lot of the back history of Saul Alinsky and the communist invasion of America. So, you know, I think one of the most profound things you've said on this interview today, Mallory, is that the Cold War, that Ronald Reagan did not win the Cold War. That, no, that's, no it's, a, it's a myth that's designed to make us complacent and yeah. to think that we want. You know, I wanted to tell you, Terry, the people who made A Wolf in Sheep's Clothing have just made a new movie called Gender Agenda, which I'm the, one of the stars of this movie. They have me talking a lot. I've got a big, long interview in this movie. Ooh, and good. so people, once they see Wolf in Sheep's Clothing and they're hooked on these, these filmmakers, the next one they want to look out for is Gender Agenda by the Paines, Richard and Stephen Payne. They are great movie makers. And I haven't yet seen this movie that I'm in, but I know it'll be wonderful. And can you give us highlights of what the movie's about? I mean, obviously, it's about how they're well, misusing it's, it's gender. About, it's a, yeah. It's about how they're using gender and the fact that they think there are 36 genders and 72 genders. This is all such nonsense. I mean, yeah. I don't know why anybody would buy into such stupidity. Well, it's, it's just a, silliness. But you know? again, they've been so effective, particularly in teaching you know the younger generations that oh, you know, tr- you know this whole transgender thing and all you know, or or if you just choose, it can just be your personal choice that you know I'm Terry Beatley and I'm a man. Well, this week, as a matter of fact, this week, <laughs> we saw what happened. A transgender, you know, um, I mean, let's face it, he's a man, but he's acting as a woman, <laughs> and he just beat, uh, in a world championship cycling race, the two leading women. So a transgender yeah. male just beat Can the you two believe women. that? That's so unfair. I- it's so unfair. I it's mean, let them just, have a transgender but race, but for God's sake, don't that that's that's not right. <laughs> that is not right. And I can't, just can per, only imagine what the women it's feel like. It's preposterous. Yeah. It's preposterous. And yeah. you could never get the Americans in the 50s and 60s to buy into something like that. The whole country would have just laughed out loud in unison. But they have groomed us, you know, over these last couple of decades. They've groomed everybody and shamed everybody and embarrassed everybody into their way of thinking. You know, so, I mean, we just must 
stop accepting these silly things and get back to basics. That's right. Get, get back, back to, to the basic nature of things. Well, and we know where that basic nature can be found, and and uh, and and we should not be ashamed of it. So, so you know, and, and we we were told too. You know, it's actually written down, and and we were warned. It's been around for what a couple thousand years at the least. You know, what, what will be called good? Well, it, no, what was it? What's evil will be called good. What's good will be called evil. Uh, you know, what's right is wrong. Wrong is right. Everything's upside down. But um, but we know where the truth is. So, Mallory, I want to so, thank you. So we know that this is just a phase. We know this is just a phase, Terry. And in years to come, we will look back at this little era and laugh at the nonsense that prevailed. <laughs> exactly. I mean, the, 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 the sad part of this is that a lot of people get hurt. A lot of people get hurt, if not oh. die. You know, so you get people who are dying, ruined. you know, and they're ruined uh, and they're hurt, right. uh, the emotional scars. And that's been going on now for a couple generations. So, so the fallout of this right. whole sexual uh, revolution, the fallout of um, really moving away from truth, um, it, it hurts. Uh, but when people mm -hmm. like you are willing to get off the couch and share and try to teach and love people with the truth, that's that's I think when culture can change. So, and I know you're doing it even in your own hometown. So, God bless you. Thank you for being on today, Mallory. And and uh, oh. usual, I will have you back. <laughs> it's such a joy to talk to you, Terry. I can't tell you what what a comfort it is to encounter a mind like yours, a mind and heart and soul like yours. Well, we love people. We both love people. And we want people to have the truth. And we want the lies yeah. to be slain. <laughs>